Welcome to Finance and Excel video number 72. Hey, if you want to download this workbook, chapter 8, click on the link directly below the video and scroll way down to the Finance Excel class section. Hey, we're talking about investment criteria, whether or not we should invest in the asset. We've looked at net present value and payback. Now we're going to look at the average accounting return. There are many different definitions. Here's one. You've got to calculate the average net income. So calculate the net income for each uh, period and then ca calculate an average and then divide it by the average book value. This sort of looks like return on assets, right? In chapter three, we did net income divided by the asset value. Um, and for that reason, there are, well, no, not for that reason. There are other ways to calculate average accounting return besides just this. Some people just take the return on assets for each year and then average them. Now the steps for us are going to be estimate all revenues and expenses over the life of the asset, calculate the net income for each year, estimate the book value. Now book value is whatever the historical cost is, um, subtract out all your accumulated depreciation, so estimate the book value over the life of the asset, and then we're going to calculate an average uh, book value, right? Because remember, that's the, going to be the denominator. We also are going to have to decide in advance the target cutoff, AAR rate. So this is the rate. We Anything above this, um, we're going to accept anything below it, we're not going to accept. So this is the rate we want. This is the ac average accounting rate we actually want. Decision rule, accept the project if calculated AAR is greater than the cutoff. So this cutoff is like the hurdle. Anything above it, we're going to accept it. Now this is using accounting information, right? Not as good as cash flow information. Financial managers usually like to deal with cash flows. but so that's a big downside to this measure. However, people do use this because accounting information is usually easy to get. All right, let's see how to do this. We've estimated this is the same exact example we've done. Let's see. This is the same exact exact example we did for net present value and payback, um, except for we. Uh, when we looked at this slide before, we knew that these were the calculated amounts and theirs was the average book value. So now we're going to actually see how to calculate. So we've estimated. There's the revenue, there's the expenses, and these are all the expenses including depreciation and tax. So we will calculate our net income for each year. All the revenues minus <coughs> all of the expenses, control enter, and I'm going to drag that over. All right, now average, we're going to use the average function adds them all up, divides by the count. So adds them all up, divides by three. So that's the average net income over the life of this uh, project here. Now, book value. Book value. Well, first we need to calculate our depreciation. And depreciation, the idea behind depreciation, I know this is not an accounting class, but it's simple. Uh, $180,000 for the original cost. If you took that as an expense in the first year, uh, the expense would be too big because this asset's going to last over three years. So the idea is you got to chop it into three pieces and put some in each year. All right, so the one way to do depreciation is straight line. And we're going to assume that at the end of three years, it'll have no value. So the salvage value is zero. So here's our depreciation calculation. Original cost minus the salvage divided by the number of years. And that's how much we're going to take each year. Now, book value. Well, at time zero, what's the book value? This. Now, after one year, the accumulated depreciation, there is a depreciation expense, which hits the income statement. And there's also a balance sheet account called accumulated depreciation. And so at the end of one year, we take the, hundred, the original historical cost and subtract the accumulated depreciation. Now, here it's minus 60,000. And you ma imagine if you were looking at the accumulated depreciation account at the end of year two, it would say 120, because there's been two years where we took 60,000. But for this calculation, we're trying to figure out the book value. So this, this, I'm just going to say whatever the book value from last period minus that. 
and I'm going to hit the F4 key to lock it. So right now we can see 120 minus 60, that means the balance will be this. When I copy this over, of course we're going to get zero. Now you take the average, and the reason I'm showing you this calculation uh, there's an easier way to do average book value when you have straight line and it goes down to zero here. But I'm showing you how to do it each year because if you don't have depreciation, straight line depreciation method, then you got to calculate uh, your your book value, whatever whatever calculation have the book value for each individual year, whatever those calculations are, and then you average them. So ninety thousand now. The easy way to do this and uh, is to simply, given that we have straight line down to zero, we simply say that divided by two. Right? In all the examples in this textbook, that's what they'll give you. Right? But the uh, that method, that long method, gets you the same thing. And if for some reason there's a different depreciation method than straight line, that will work. Now we have our numbers. We have average net income, average book value, we can simply divide the two. Right? This is kind of like return on assets. Here's the average return over in accounting numbers over the project. Here's the average um, book value over the period and boom. So we get an AAR of 0.2148. Our target hurdle is 25, so no way. We reject project. All right now, of course, the problems are many with the accounting, average accounting rate. Rule does not adjust for the time value of money. Rule does not adjust for risk, meaning, as we saw with net present value, the discount rate or required rate of return would include the risk. And rule does not provide information on whether we create value or not. The only advantages, you know, some people say, well, you know, the accounting information is easy to get, whereas the cash flow information may be a little bit. Uh, the accounting, the cash flow information is hard to, harder to get than say the accounting. But you know, this is all riddled with estimations. Where again, we're doing estimating into the future, so it does seem like might as well do uh, the net present value method. Nevertheless, some people do do this, and to reiterate what I said earlier. People use multiple decision criteria. So they might do net present value, this accounting rate of return, and uh, payback or something like that. All right, when we come, let's see, um, when we come back in uh, next video, we'll actually talk about the IRR, the internal rate of return closely related to net present value. All right, see you next video.